What's going on smart people? I am in the middle of doing my quantum field theory homework and you know this class is all from the path integral perspective. I brought up path integrals a few times and I thought maybe it would be cool to show you what kind of problem we're told to solve. Now we're not actually at the quantum field theory part of this course, we're still just learning the basics of how path integrals work, so our homework is all on that. And I want to show you one of the problems, not solutions or anything like that, and I feel comfortable doing it because it's straight out of the textbook that we're using. So let's let's do that. I'm going to show you what path integral problems look like. So right now I just have a LaTeX document, or LaTeX, however you pronounce it, opened up, which is how I've been doing my homework. And number two is what we're interested in. So it says the propagator for a free particle, problem 11 in Van Bale, has a certain Lagrangian. We're using Euclidean time. I'm going to explain what this stuff means in just a little bit. Uh, the path integral becomes this expression here. We've got some u hat, we've got some product of integrals and some e to the minus s. What does all this stuff mean? Well, first I want to talk about u hat. u hat is known as the time evolution operator. And what it does is if you have some initial state, the time evolution operator acts on it and it'll transform it into a state later on in time. We're taking the matrix element and coordinate space of this time evolution operator, which is called the propagator, and there's a few ways of calculating this. What it actually stands for is it's the probability amplitude of some particle in some state going to state the next state over some time. And this stuff is weighted by this e to the minus s. This s is actually the action. So you may have heard of the principle of least action, which says that nature is lazy. And this goes to show that uh, all of those weird paths that a particle could take from going from point A to point B don't contribute much to the overall probability amplitude. Um, I mentioned Euclidean time. Euclidean time is just like we're going to imaginary time. It makes it so instead of having really oscillatory motion here, like e to the i s's, we have a dampening function which makes it easier to work with. So it's just a mathematical trick. Um, we're given the action, so this problem is telling us to find the propagator in two different ways. One by actually solving the Schrodinger equation where we're going into Euclidean time which makes it look this way. And I, I guess h bar is set to 1. And then we're also told to actually calculate the path integral to find it that way. And we're told to show that you know they give us the same answer. So here, we're supposed to solve the Schrodinger equation, not in your traditional method of actually treating it like a differential equation, but in doing a Fourier transform. Because in certain cases, if you do a Fourier transform of a differential equation, it turns the derivatives into an algebra problem, which can be really convenient. Now, I'm not an expert on this stuff by any means yet. I'm still learning it. That's why it's the homework. But I'm starting to feel a bit more comfortable with it. Uh, and then we're told to argue that, I guess, this product of measures or whatever this is supposed to be is equal to this crazy thing. This reduces the path integral to a product of Gaussian integrals. Okay, I see. So here we have a product of integrals right here, and this is saying that instead we can have an integral of products where those products are Gaussians. And a Gaussian is just like proportional to e to the x squared, e to the minus x squared. Um, so that's the path integral. We've had to do this for things like the harmonic oscillator and I'm not really sure when it starts to be more convenient to work with path integrals because for part of the homework we had to effectively derive the wave function and the eigenenergies for the harmonic oscillator using the path integral or at least sorry we were given the, the propagator and uh, it was pretty involved it's, it's much easier I think to just solve the Schrodinger equation at least for those kinds of simple cases so it'll be interesting to see once it becomes like a no, of course we're going to use the path integral or the propagator to solve this problem. Why would we do it any other way? I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm not too sure. So far, it seems like it just really paints a picture of the physics that's going on. Things like the double slit experiment become much more intuitive when you think about it in terms of the path integral. It's like the particle could go through the first path to the next state or the other path to the next state and we can sum over those probability amplitudes to get something very real and with the path integral you're just it's kind of like a generalization of that I guess because instead of one little screen with two slits you have infinitely many screens of infinitely many slits and you're adding up all of those probability amplitudes so this is a path integral problem uh, it's one that I'm currently still working on solving I'll probably post this video after I solve it uh, but yeah, it seems like a really cool problem. I'm starting to get the hang of it a little bit more. The first problem gave me some trouble, but now I'm starting to 
understand how all this stuff is connected to the traditional quantum mechanics that we know, let me know in the comment section. Does this look really, really cool to you or does it scare the shit out of you? Let me know and I'll see you guys there.